was something that emerged from a very 18th century problem. years ago, mine owners in Britain were facing a serious crisis. Since many ore deposits sat well below the water table, they were finding that their mines could only go as deep as the drainage technology at the time allowed, resulting in many mines going out of business. What was needed was a way to haul all that water up to the surface so the miners could get to the ore below. And in 1712, an ironmonger called Thomas Newcomen hit upon the answer with the world's first commercial steam engine. And it worked by harnessing the immense energy contained within hot steam. behind Newcomen's engine is exactly the same one that Otto von Goeriger had demonstrated. And that's just how hard air pressure can push, especially when there's a vacuum on the other side. I've got a plastic bottle here with some water in the bottom and I'm going to put it in the microwave to heat the water up. What's happening inside the microwave is that the water molecules are being given energy and they're not just heating up, but some of them are turning into a gas, into steam. And that steam is starting to fill up the bottle. And it's what happens next that's important. Tip it into this water here. <laughs> And you can see that what happened is that uh, the bottle has been crushed and it's now full of water. And the reason for that is that as it filled up with steam, the air was pushed out. And then when I cooled the steam down, it condensed from a gas back into a liquid, which takes up much less space. And so there's a partial vacuum left in the bottle. And so there was all the air pressure pushing in, nothing pushing back, and the bottle was crushed. This is the principle that Newcomen used to drive his engine. At the heart of Newcomen's engine lay a large metal cylinder housing a piston and filled with hot steam. Cooling this steam with water simultaneously created a vacuum and caused the weight of the atmosphere to push down on the piston, driving the engine. The cylinder was then refilled with hot steam and the cycle repeated. Soon, Newcomen's steam engines were popping up all over Britain, each one a symbol of Heat's ability to perform useful work. But Newcomen's design had one major weakness. It was hugely inefficient. Of all the energy in the coal that it consumed, only 1 to 2 percent was converted into useful mechanical work. The mystery was why. Where was all that heat energy going? And what could be done to retrieve it? To discover the answer, we've come to Cold Harbour Mill in Devon. Originally built in 1797, it's one of the oldest steam-powered woolen mills left in Britain. OK, so I won't kill anybody with the other end. John Jasper runs the mill's giant steam engine. That's good. Like that? You are a natural. Right, yeah? <laughs> OK. Right side. Yeah. Yes. So tell me about these boilers. This is a Lancashire boiler. It holds 20,000 gallons of water. Above that water level, you have steam. <laughs> you get a bit of steam. <laughs> right. 
So it's basically a sort of steam kettle. So these bits are the heating elements. Effectively, you're shoving That's right. fire into the heating element. That's it. And then all of this is the kettle, which is full of water. That's right. But instead of coming out of the spout, yes. it goes to a steam engine. No, it Just takes a, a little longer to get to the boil. <laughs> Better Thanks. do some more shoveling then. Yeah.